It's true to three ten thousands. Like the specifications called for. I don't understand, Stefan. Then the fault is not mine. It is in the steel itself. Lucas, Kasner, what are you doing here? Good evening, Mr. Foster. What are you men up to? Nothing, Mr. Foster. We, we were just wondering how come Steve's job turned out so bad. He did a lousy job. That's how come. But, Mr. Foster, it looks perfect to me. Here, check it for yourself. I don't have to. Go on now, beat it. Listen, Mr. Foster. Shut up. But, Mr. Foster. And you too. All right, Kasnar, out and stay out. You're through here. No, you must listen to Lucas, me. Lucas, get this man out of here. You're four minutes late, Sam. Good reason to be. The man I put on that tubing order, Kasner, was out in the shop just now. Uh, yes? He was trying to find out what he had done wrong. To make it crack up when they installed it. I should have sent him in here to talk to you fellas. You bought the steel he worked on from you, Dorn. Well, you're in on it, too. That's why I call this meeting. What about Kasnar? I fired him. Smart. Things have been going so good lately. Not for me. Really, Sam. You're in for 30%. You've netted 18 or 20,000 so far. 16,000. That ain't peanuts, you know, for a production manager. An outfit this size? I want 50%. Or I'm going to tell Mr. Jensen that his purchasing agent and his jobber have been cheating him blind. And how are you going to stay in the clear? Me? I've just been giving you boys enough rope. Would Jensen buy that? I think he might. Okay, Sam, you've got it. Fifty percent. <laughs> Would have been 60% next time. Leaving the studio, I thought I was all done with the subject of my television debate. The law, does it help justice or hinder it? Thirty seconds later, though, the subject was reopened by a machinist named Anton Lucas. Mr. Maris, my name is Anton Lucas. I, I had to see you. The reason I had to find you, it's an emergency. Steve won't listen to me. Steve. I Steve. Stefan Kasner. Kasner, yes, I've seen that name. It has been in the newspapers for the last two days, but he didn't do it, Mr. Maris. He did not kill Sam Foster, no matter what they say. According to the papers, he ran away, Mr. Lucas. Why? He was afraid of the police. You see, he's only been in this country for a couple of months. Is he still hiding out? Yes, sir. But if you talk to him, if you promise to help him... Mr. Lucas, even if the man were innocent, I couldn't talk to him. But he is innocent. You've got to help him. I'm sorry. You, you don't understand. If I go to Steve and tell him that you turned him down, I don't know what he would do. He's getting desperate. I mean it, Mr. Maris. All right, bring him to my office. I'll talk to him. If the story adds up, I'll see that he's adequately represented by one of my assistants. You, you wouldn't be able to do it yourself? I'm going to be in court most of this week and next on a tax matter. But I will keep an eye on the Kasner case. All right. You understand, of course, that after I've talked to him, I'll have to send for the police and that he'll have to surrender to them. That will be all right. As long as Steve knows that you are looking out for him, you will be, huh? I, I can tell him that. Thank you, Mr. Maris.
is it? Uncle. You couldn't find Mr. Morris. I found him, Stefan. Well, where is he then? He will not help me. Of course he will help us. He wants you to come to his office right away. He wants you to tell him the whole story. At his office? But why not here? Now, Anton, this could be a trap. No. No, he is not that kind of a man. He won't even send for the police until after he has talked to you. He promised me. You believe this? Yes. Of course I do. Hey, I brought you food. Eat and we will go, huh? Stefan. Stefan, this is not like the old country. Here, a man like Mr. Maris, he... He shakes your hand and that is it. You can take it to the bank. Open up, police! He had me followed. Grab it, Kesner. <laughs> And further, in the case of McCrary versus Hartford, previously cited, it was held that... Just a minute, Miss Benton. It was held that intent to defraud... It's me, Mr. Maris. Anton Lucas. Where's Kasner? You shouldn't have lied to me, Mr. Maris. What do you mean? All that I heard about you, what a great man you were. You shook my hand, then you sent for the police. The police have arrested him? Just as you told them to. Why don't you pick up the phone and have them come and get me too? Well, don't blame me if the police were clever enough to shatter you. I had nothing to do with it. I'm only trying to find out where they've taken him. Why? I said I'd talk to him. Miss Benton? Get me Lieutenant Weston, please. We made a mistake or two before, maybe, and maybe we will again, only this time we didn't. You think Kastner's guilty, huh? I arrest people, I don't judge them. But we got enough on this boy to burn them. The night watchman's statement? That's ah, in what Kasner's own buddy said, Lucas. The night watchman saw Kasner standing over the body. When he saw the night watchman, he took off like a thief. Lieutenant, why would Kasner want to kill Sam Foster? Didn't Lucas tell you? Kasner had a beef with Foster at the plant that night, and Foster fired him. Go on. It's all there in the folder. Lucas took Kasner out for a walk after the blow-up to cool him off. In a little bit, Kasner said he wanted to go back and talk to Foster. Alone. Kasner said, quote, I'm sure I can prove I'm right, and then he'll give my job back to me, unquote. Yeah. That sound to you like a man with murder on his mind? So he changed his mind. I'd like to hear what he has to say about it. Is that all right with you, Lieutenant? You representing him, Counselor? My office, maybe. I won't know till I've talked to him. <laughs> I doubt that he'll talk to you. He thinks you turned him in. The police knew he was your friend, Kasner, so they assigned a man to follow him. Lucas led them to you. I had nothing to do with it. That's the truth, Kasner. Why are you here, then? If you're innocent, to help you. With him here? Did you kill Sam Foster? When I walked into the office, he was already dead. You had an argument with him earlier in the evening? I did, but... Matter of fact, you fired you practically three out of the place. Yes. His mind was already made up against me. And that made you angry, didn't it? Yes. Then I realized where I was. That there was another way. Many other ways. Tell us what you mean. In my country, if a workman is treated unjustly, what can he do? He cannot even go to his foreman. Were he to dare even speak of it to his supervisor, to a man like Mr. Foster, he would be sent to prison, worse to the mines. Very nice speech. I did not lift my hand against him. 
Surely you believe me, Mr. Morris. You will help me. You haven't given me very much to help you with. It is the same here, then. No. No? There, a man is believed guilty when he's brought to trial. He must prove his innocence. I thought that here, he was innocent before the law until the state proved his guilt. not take a life again, not even for such a cause. I'll be back. I've got to check something. Sam didn't have any enemies. None would want to kill him anyway. Except Kasner. Now, they got the right man, all right. You seem pretty certain of that, Mr. Hamlin. Why? That's all his kind knows. Man does something that riles you, you smash his head in. His kind? You know what I mean. The way they're always killing each other off over there on the other side. I was wondering, did Foster have any trouble with him before that night? Plenty. Big tubing job Kasner worked on turned out real bad. Company we made it for raised the roof. Foster tried to straighten him out, but that character just wouldn't admit it was his fault. I suppose Foster had to fire him, but he'd be alive today if he hadn't. Well, thank you, Mr. Hennon. Glad to help you get the picture. You did. I'd like everything you've got on the Foster killing so far. I'm going to represent Kasner personally. Oh, you finally talked your window. No, no, he didn't. A man named Hinman did. The longer I studied the facts on the murder of Sam Foster, the more certain I was that my client, Steve Kasner, was innocent. But not for any reason I could prove. Not yet. United States Employment Service tested Kasner three months ago and rated him an expert machinist. A number one. So? So it's just not possible he was fired for spoiling that order. He couldn't do that bad a job if he tried. You think Foster fired him for some other reason? Covering up something or somebody. And that somebody knocked him off anyway. Oh, that's reaching pretty far. Once I find out what really went wrong with that order, you may not have to reach far at all, Lieutenant. What went wrong? Kasner is a careless workman. This is precision work, Mr. Maris. They must be very accurate. How do you ever manage to get a job here, Mr. Jensen? Your shop had such a good reputation. Mistake. It happens. I tested him out like everybody would put on, and he fooled me. He checked out great. I'm still not completely clear on what went wrong. No. George, did you bring one of those tubing rejects with you? Yes, sir. Get it, will you? Mm-hmm. George there is one of the best purchasing agents in town. I imagine he knows steel pretty well, then. That's production's job. Men like Sam Foster, rest his soul. Sam knew steel. Hinman knows where to get it. That's what I pay him for. This is what went wrong, Maris. Vanadium steel, toughest you can buy. It's supposed to take real punishment without cracking. Only it cracked. Every length of tubing they installed had only 1,200 pounds pressure. It was designed to carry that much, I suppose. The order called for tubing that would carry 1,500 pounds pressure. What we gave them should have stood up under 16 or better. Instead, it went to pieces at 12. 
because Kasner machined it wrong. But it wasn't the fault of the steel. I didn't say it was, Mr. Hanman. That tubing came from Interallied Vanadium of Pittsburgh. Here's the invoice. Shipped by Frank Dorn Company, this city, Jarvis. Best in town. Been giving us great service for years. Same for Interallied? Oh, uh, no. We just started doing business with them. Dorn recommended them, didn't he? That's right, Mr. Jensen. They're a little high, but you said never mind about that. Right. This is quality operation all the way down the line, Mr. Maris. Except for one in a million goof-off like Kasner pulled. No one else could have ruined that job, Mr. Maris. Well, if you ever do find out differently, I would like to know. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen, for your help. Anytime. Well, how do you like that? To make Kasnar look good, he's got to make us look bad. Maybe we do look bad. You're kidding, Mr. Jensen. Maybe there was something wrong with the design. Maybe even the steel. I want you to check it out, George, all the way. Yes, sir. What took you so long? I came as soon as I could. What's eating you? I'll tell you what. You told me that tubing had to be able to carry 800 pounds. The stuff I shipped could. More, even. But not 1,200, for Pete's sake. Look. You just stick with the story, understand? All you did was order the steel for me from inter-allied vanadium. All you did was forward it. All I did was receive it. Suppose they backtrack to Pittsburgh. What'll they find? You've taken care of that already? I took care of it, Dorn. You got nothing to worry about, understand? You just stick with the story. It was not vanadium steel. You're sure of that? Why? It machined so easily. I worked with vanadium steel once in Europe. It was diamond hard. You told that to Foster? I told him, but he said I didn't know what I was talking about. But when the news came that the tubing had cracked and split, then I knew. And Foster knew that you knew. He had to fire you. To conceal his mistake? No mistake. A plan. A plan to cheat the company. And I'm sure that whoever set it up with Foster ended up by killing him. And it wasn't you. You're sure they don't answer? Inter-Allied Vanadium must have a switchboard. Would you check it for me? Inter-Allied Vanadium of Pittsburgh. Great big company and nobody answers the phone. Yes? Let's see. Well, thanks. The number is disconnected. Could be a coincidence. Could be. But I don't think so. This is what I thought the Pittsburgh mills of Interallied Vanadium Company might look like. With offices and a skyscraper like this. Instead, the phone book listed this as Interallied's sole address. Gustav Hart. Called in yesterday. Said he was closing up shop, effective immediately. Wanted me to rebate some of the rent money. <laughs> My fault? He paid up three months in advance? Of course not. Say, do you happen to remember what this Mr. Hart looks like? Like anybody else. Why? Well, Gus Hart doesn't dress like anybody else. At least he didn't used to. You know, sports jacket, fancy vest, everything that goes with it. <laughs> That's him, all right. Buddy of yours, huh? Life safe. The way I see it, Hinman, you've got just one chance with Jensen. Clearing yourself before he finds out. It's hard to believe about Frank Dorn. 
It's the truth, though. He pulled a fast one. Charged it for the high grade, delivered the medium grade, and pocketed the difference. I'll be. Does he know what you found out? No. We're leaving him alone for a while. We? The police. Until they complete their case against him for murder. Murder? They think he killed Sam Foster. Probably because Foster caught on to the swindle. Well, how did they... I mean... Did they know he was there that night? Not fairly sure of it. And when they start questioning him... You know Frank Dorn pretty well. You think he'll hold out for long? When do you think they'll... Uh, pick him up? Oh, I don't know. By tomorrow, probably. Well, I've got to be going. I want to catch Jensen before he cuts out for the day. Oh, I hope you do. I'd better, huh? I want to save my neck. <laughs> Thanks again, Maris. Now, though. tried to kill me. The way he killed Foster? Keep your mouth shut. They can't prove a thing about Foster. That's right, Hinman. Not without a witness. We won't be able to hold you on that charge. You will now. You've got a witness. Me. 